Hello and good morning everyone. In this channel, this is my first lecture and in this first lecture, I'm going to talk about UPSC because this channel is all about UPSC. I'm going to upload information related to UPSC. I'm going to upload material related to UPSC. Okay, so this is my first lecture. So I want to start as soon as possible without wasting time as time is very much precious for all the UPSC aspirant and other as well. Okay, so which part of Indian constitution talks about UPSC? As we all know that there are 25 parts in Indian constitution. Okay, or we can say Indian constitution has been divided into 25 parts. So which part of Indian constitution deals with UPSC? Part 14 of Indian constitution deals with UP. SC part 14 okay and which article deals with the UPSC article number 315 to 323 of Indian Constitution deals with UPSC okay and when it comes to appointments okay who appoints the member of UPSC that is president of India appoints the member of UPSC okay and what qualification is required to become the member of UPSC no qualification has been mentioned in the Indian Constitution, but one half of the member of the UPSC has to have 10 years of service experience in state or in center. Okay, I hope these four points are clear to you all. Okay, and when we come, uh, we talk about uh, tenure. Okay, so if anybody becomes the member of UPSC, then uh, the uh, he can become for six years or 65 years of age whichever is earliest okay please remember this as well okay and who can remove the member of UPSC member of UPSC can be removed by the president but in a constitutional manner what does it mean uh, about the removal of the member of UPSC it has been mentioned in the constitution and in that way only president can remove the member of UPSC or other thing is uh, if any member of UPSC uh, wants to leave the post then uh, he or she can give resignation letter to the president if he or she does that then he can he is considered as uh, a vacant or removed okay and other point is the function of UPSC, when we uh, talk about the function of UPSC, then uh, uh, UPSC conducts exam for All India Service, All India Service, Central Service or other public service uh, of centrally administered territory. If few territories are there, which are directly, you know, controlled by center and in that uh, territory, uh, UPSC can conduct public service exam. This is the point. And a uh, point which uh, I have missed is the member, okay? Uh, there are total 11 members in UPSC, including the chairman. There is one chairman, okay? I hope this much point is clear for you all in this first video. And I will be uploading such uh, useful information in other videos as well. Please do like and subscribe it will be very much useful after watching my video you will not feel like you have wasted time and these are very basic video but why i am uploading this simple things because when we go forward to understand basics is very much important okay thank you very much but this is not only basic questions can come from here as well because this content i have took from very important source i have compiled it and i have delivered it to you okay i hope this information will be very much useful for you all thank you very much have a nice day ahead